What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Cruise News Show. I'm your host, Tony, here with the latest cruise news. I got a question that is a brain worm for me today. I just can't seem to shake it, and I thought maybe we could break it down together. Which is worse when cruising resumes? Having to wear a mask on a cruise or not being able to explore the ports of call? Let's. I got some opinions. Let's talk about it, but this is the Cruise News Show. First, let's talk about the cruise news. Well, I, I jinxed them, I think. I sounded the horn. I said, look at Tui. They're going to cruise no matter what. They're going to keep it going in Germany. And right after I said that, the German government said nine or eight. No, you can't keep cruising. You can't keep doing your German cruises to nowhere. We're shutting you down. So, uh, yeah, sorry if I jinxed you, Tui, but that's the update. Tui Cruises, they have been cruising successfully in Germany. Three months, 30,000 passengers. I gave you all that data before. Uh, none of that matters. The government says it's too risky right now. You can't cruise. And, uh, yeah, they're, they're having trouble in Germany. They're also having trouble in France. And because they're having trouble in Germany and in France, sailings on the MSC Magnifica starting on November the 8th, they have been canceled. They will resume sailing again December the 8th. 18th, putting together a Christmas cruise. The main reason they canceled these cruises, they were primarily servicing passengers from France and Germany. And those are two places in Europe that are struggling right now with the virus. Better safe than sorry. Going to shut it down for right now, but we'll kick it up again in December. Now the MSC Grandiosa continues to sail there in Italy. Uh, they're not affected by the same passenger load from Germany and France. And so uh, the Magnifico will take a break. The Grandiosa will continue sailing. I mentioned yesterday that cruising was resumed zooming in Japan and now we have a significant piece of Japanese cruise news for the first time since last year we have a major cruise ship entering the port of Shimizu in Japan the Asuka 2 one of the larger cruise ships in Japan stopping at the port the Asuka 2 has a passenger capacity of 839 passengers uh, they made port there with 329 passengers and this port's significant it's one of those ports where you can get off and wander around and get some amazing views of Mount Fuji and so again, for the first time since last December, cruise ship making its way to some of the major ports in Japan, the Azuka 2 stopping at the Shimizu port uh, after leaving from Yokohama just a couple days ago. Of course, Yokohama is significant. That was the cruise port where the Diamond Princess rode out the pandemic and really made global news. So cruising continues in Japan. They're doing fairly well with the virus, and you're starting to see this uh, almost like a cruise to nowhere, a state-to-state, -state, a prefecture-to-prefecture -prefecture cruise in Japan. Now, one thing you certainly don't want to wait a year to do is to subscribe to the Cruise News Show here on the Lolly to Look a YouTube channel. Subscribe to the channel with the notification bell on. That way you don't miss out on any of these shows, and that way you know when the shows are released. I'm here doing it for you almost every Monday through Friday. Please consider subscribing, and uh, thank you. Thank you in advance. Now, I know a lot of U.S. passengers not super excited about what's going on in the rest of the world. What's happening here in the United States? Well, Royal Caribbean's starting to talk a little bit about their resumption of cruising. In her weekly phone call with travel agents, Vicki Freed, the vice president of sales and trade and services for Royal Caribbean Cruise Lines, gave some insight as to what cruising would look like with Royal Caribbean once it starts up again. It's not a huge surprise. Short cruises from Florida to Coco Cay there in the Bahamas, the private island for Royal Caribbean. She mentioned that these cruises would be starting in 2021. I'm not sure if that means for paying passengers or for the test sailings, but she did also mention the test sailing, saying that Royal Caribbean would need volunteers, that they don't necessarily have a process in place for how to pick them yet. Said that she's been notified by many travel agents with their hand up saying that they would happily go on these test cruises. And so, yeah, I think they're going to have a good pool of people to choose from when it comes to these test sailings. Whether it is travel agents, friends and family, or other people out there, uh, volunteers will be needed for cruising. And those cruises will start in 2021. Short trips to Coco Cay makes a lot of sense. Now, I have heard some of the pundits here on YouTube talking about how the cruise lines are distraught and upset with the new CDC guidelines. Well, they're not saying that publicly, at least not Richard Fain, the CEO of Royal Caribbean Group. He releases a weekly video. It's been posted on several channels. It's worth a watch if you get the chance. The Royal Caribbean blog here on YouTube has it posted. A lot of people, again, saying, well, the cruise lines are probably disgruntled. Well, Richard Fain said that this 
This end of the no sell order, the replacement of the no sell order with the conditional framework for sailing. He said this is the next step in the journey. He talks about a positive relationship with the CDC and working with them to get cruising resumed again. In that video, he says it's a good thing. I've, I've been beating that drum for a few days. Conditional sailing framework is better than the no sell order because the no sell order means no sailing, no business, no resumption of cruising. And this conditional framework means there is a path. And uh, like me, Richard Fain is excited about it. And so don't worry, the cruise lines are not that bummed out. They're getting to sail again. They're getting to go back to work. And uh, this is exciting. So, uh, yeah, check out that Richard Fain video. Go to Royal Caribbean blog. And uh, it's, it's good stuff. It's worth the watch. Now let's take a couple minutes and talk about which is worse. Which is worse? Wearing a mask on a cruise ship or not being able to explore the port. I don't know. For me, neither one of them really bothers me. I don't do a lot of port exploration. I kind of like to get an excursion and go on something very specific. So the fact that I'll have to get on an excursion on the cruise ship that the cruise ship provides doesn't bum me out too much. And I've made no secret about it. I do believe that masking is a good health and safety protocol. And so I'll be happy to wear it wherever I cannot social distance. I think that's the thing that people miss out on the cruise ships that's the requirement you have to wear the mask where you cannot social distance so if you're up on the top deck and nobody else is up there at two o'clock in the morning you're not going to have to mask up but if you're in a crowded hallway with a bunch of people or trying to get on an elevator with a bunch of people you got to wear the mask i'm not going to have any problem with it i know that there's a segment of the population that are anti-mask and maybe people that are anti-mask will stay off the cruise ship so it's really a moot point but in reality i doubt that anybody really likes to wear the mask i mean i think people are doing it consciously because they believe that that's the thing to do to help out. Uh, I don't think anybody's like, oh, I'm so excited to be wearing this mask. So I don't think that's going to be true on the cruise ship. But I know there are a lot of people out there that are willing to go on a cruise ship and wear the mask, but they're not as excited about the restriction when it comes to excursions. So yeah, that's the question for the comments today, which is more irksome. Is it the requirement to wear a mask or is it the restriction against being able to explore the port on your own on an excursion? Let's continue the conversation. The word of the day is pedicab. P-E-D-I-C-A-B. I don't know if that's hyphenated. I'm not a linguist. Pedicab. Can you work that into a comment? How creative are you? Uh, I was just thinking about that because excursions and such. Uh, leave a comment below. Thank you so much for checking out the show today. I hope you enjoyed it. Show your support by hitting the like button. My name's Tony for La Lida Loca, and until the next time, we'll see you on the Lido.